All right, guys, welcome to another episode of No Holds Barred Wrestling Radio. I'm your host, Kyle, my co-hosts, Phil, What's and up? match technician, Brandon. What up? Um, getting off here to a Friday Night Smackdown. We're opening up with the Triple H segment. Uh, Phil, basically, Triple H coming out and uh, just talking about the Shield, uh, quoting line in the sand sort of deal for the Shield to cross. Yeah, I guess he, he referenced his, the evolution theme there, which is called line in the sand. Strangely enough, he came out to King of Kings, so Triple H is like a man of uh, three themes right now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, um, he's putting over um, his battle with the Shield again, or Evolution's battle with the Shield. He announced that there would be a match at Extreme Rules, the Shield versus Evolution. And basically, he's saying some really cool stuff, like Roman Reigns said, Oh, kings don't, don't win wars, Triple H soldiers do. And then Triple H says, Oh, well, soldiers are the currency upon which empires are built. I thought that was pretty cool. And I guess uh, just back back in uh, 2003, Evolution used to open Raw many, many times with the 20-minute promos. I wonder if we can expect yeah, it I don't, this, I don't, this time around. Well, you know what? Even with Monday Night Raw's uh, three-hour time frame, I think we could probably see 20 or 30-minute promos. But who knows? I guess we'll have to see in the upcoming weeks. Uh, maybe we don't even know if this is going to last past Extreme Rules. Um, other than that, uh, that's what opened for SmackDown this week, and uh, we'll get right into our first match of the night, which was uh, Alberto Del Rio versus Big E. Brandon, what do you got for that match? Uh, well, it was a typical heel versus face, you know, type of matchup to start. Del Rio dominated, and then uh, Big E started to come back a little bit. He sidestepped ADR in the steel post, uh, then he tried to go for his patented Big E splash. He was countered, knees to the gut. Uh, they went to commercial, and apparently during the WWE app, or on the app during the commercial, uh, Big E and ADR both fell very hard to the floor uh, from the outside of the ring. And uh, they come back, they get back in the ring, um, Big E catches, them, catches Del Rio, gives him a backbreaker off the top rope. Uh, Del Rio countered the big ending into a backbreaker, which was a and nice touch. The Carlito backstabber. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Biggie was able to get um, to the rope uh, to avoid tapping out from the cross arm breaker. Uh, Del Rio did not let go after the five count, uh, meeting a disqualification. Del Rio was furious with the referee's decision, so he went after Biggie after the match. Uh, attempted to give him one of those uh, patented uh, snap kicks right to the head. Biggie countered and gave him a big ending. Yeah. That was the end of that. So basically just a heel DQ kind of winning match there. Uh, yeah, I mean, Del Rio's a first-round loser in this IC title tournament, so he gets to face the champion right away, um, not not for the title. But yeah, I mean, Del Rio losing by DQ, he's a former world champ, so, you know, him losing to Big E, that, that wouldn't go well with him. No. And um, I guess ring-wise, Big E Langston is uh, pretty much the same, but we did get to see a different side of him in uh, that opening, uh, that introductory video promo where he's trying to be a little bit more charismatic. He's talking about this oh, pop God. lock and drop it challenge or whatever in Tampa. You mean, you mean to play the PG era crowd on SmackDown? Jesus Christ. <laughs> My God, these promos on SmackDown. I, I seriously, I think I'd go bald if I watched 100 of them a day. Jesus Christ. I don't know what they're doing with these things. But whatever, you know, that's Friday Night SmackDown for you. Okay, after that match, we have uh, the Paul Heyman segment. Uh, basically, Paul Heyman already in the ring. Basically talking about his client, Barack Lesnar. Um, and him saying over... This is probably the funniest segment I've ever seen. Just Paul Heyman saying the exact same words probably over... and 30 times. Yeah, I think about 30 times. Brock Lesnar saying he conquered the streak. And just after a while, I mean, I, I, I couldn't tell how long he was going to keep that up for. But uh, Brock Lesnar, just him putting over Brock Lesnar again, we're probably not going to see him till SummerSlam, which I think is still a slap in the face to everyone. He gets to beat the streak and then leave whenever the fuck he wants to and then not come back till SummerSlam. Probably gets instant title shot when he comes back. Yeah, no, I mean, no Cesaro on SmackDown this week, just Paul Heyman. And yeah, just when you think he's about to say something else, uh, Paul Heyman just keeps repeating himself. I am, my client Brock Lesnar conquered the streak. Just saying it over and over again. Um, I quite enjoyed this promo, actually. I don't know. I think you guys enjoyed it, too. I think it was just fun. And, I mean, yeah, like every show since WrestleMania so far, almost every show, just Paul Heyman just throwing it in the crowd's faces. 
the crowd obviously angry about it. And uh, yeah, like uh, honestly, Brock Lesnar when he comes back, um, I think we can probably expect a title shot for him. I don't know. Yeah, I well, guarantee he gets a title shot. Yeah, but beating the streak. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird. He just had Paul Heyman singled out on SmackDown. None, none of his Paul Heyman guys there. Not even our boys Rybacks were there. Uh, former Paul Heyman guys. No, but. they've been pretty busy lately. <laughs> so I guess they got a break. I guess they maybe they went down to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I don't well, know. probably. Yeah, we got, there was a live tour in Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, no divas were allowed over there. And uh, <laughs> no divas in the crowd either. Yeah. It was all a, a, an all man show. Yeah. Uh, speaking of divas, uh, on to the divas match, which happened right after this is. Uh, my girl Paige, the lovely Paige, against Oksana, former girlfriend to Teddy Long, who mysteriously disappeared. And fiancé to Goldust. And fiancé to Goldust, yes. Do <laughs> uh, you have anything for this match, Brandon? Uh, a little bit. Oksana blindsided Paige to start the match. Um, after that, there were huge Paige chants for SmackDown, which was, which was nice to see. Um, Paige looked really aggressive in this match. Many knees to the head. She's got a crazy fighting style, Paige. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like uh, it. She was showing ruthless aggression, as yes. Mr. Man likes to say. <laughs> um, and then to end the match, the modified Scorpion cross lock for the win. I love that move. That is the most intense finisher for a diva I have ever seen. Uh, I'd put it up there with the Emma Lock. Emma Lock is still kind of sick. But, uh, my God. Paige right now has to be the number one hottest diva <laughs> out there. I don't even care. That's my pick. She's the hottest diva out there. She's a great wrestler. She's that, that aggressive style mm-hmm. that... Oh, yeah, just, like, throwing elbows in, uh, yeah. in uh, Oksana's face in the, at the corner of the ring. So, like, a Mickey James and, like, Victoria put together. And people don't realize that she's only 21, so the only sky's the limit for her. Yeah. Oh, man, they can do great things with her, and I hope yep. WWE does do that. Uh, that's, that's, she's picking up now her third win. Uh, including her Divas title win. Uh, we'll just have to see what uh, has in store for her against Tamina at Extreme Rules. Uh, after that, uh, we had, my God, apparently this was really hyped by Michael Cole and JBL. They really enjoyed reason. this match. El Torito against Hornswoggle. Oh, oh the tail of the tape for that match was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Their favorite basketball teams is uh, the Bulls for uh, El Torito and the Celtics for Hornswoggle. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, again, playing to the <laughs> PG crowd. Uh, Brandon, did you get anything out of this? I don't even call this a match. This, this half of match. This half of match. Uh, there were kind of a, a few good good moves in here. El Torito hit a Huracurana on Hornswoggle. Which was uh, pretty funny. Yeah. Oh man, there were a couple. Uh, they were basically just using former wrestlers' yep. uh, moves in this one. Like we seen, yeah, the Hurricanrana. Uh, I think we seen the the Bronco Buster. Yep, and then Hornswoggle also hit a bonsai drop and a, clo- <laughs> and a JBL clothesline from hell as well. <laughs> and then El Torito uh, did a moonsault off the top rope for the win. Yeah, which uh, interesting. Lita esque kind of moonsault, I guess. But uh, I guess you can call that a match. Um, Give it a half of a star since it's it SmackDown. What, <laughs> else could we, what else could we expect from SmackDown, guys? Come on, SmackDown. Yo, you predicted this match last week. You said, "Oh, El Torito and El Chico will just have an Iron Man match on SmackDown every week." And then the next thing you know, the the feud starts uh, this week. I guess you can call that an Iron Man match. You call that a freaking oh, guy. I can't get into that. I think I'll get in trouble for I want what I want to say. Other than that, I guess it was okay. All right, next we had some bad news, Brandon. Uh, yeah, bad news, Barrett. Just a quick sta- uh, statement up on his podium there. He said he had some bad news about how the midget match um, was horrible and that by watching it, the crowd themselves had small brains. Small. Yeah. He's, not a big, he's not as big a fan of this feud as JBL you know, and Cole are. I'm a big Tennessee fan, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not a fan of these Tennessee slash uh, these small... Communities they like W likes going to where the crowd sucks ass. My God, the crowd reactions in some of these places suck. They gotta just. Oh, I wish they can't, but like they have. I love when you watch Raw and SmackDown in like good cities like Philly, New York, uh, anywhere in California is a pretty good crowd. Oh, man, no crowd. I, and it's also fake crowd reactions. So we couldn't even tell what the reaction was like. As SmackDown doesn't like to have their live crowd for some reason. But other than that, uh, right after that we had the. Alexander Rusev, Rusev Bachka, versus Archer Rusev Rusev. and Lana, and Lord Lana, my girl Lana. She has her own theme. I didn't even realize yeah. that. Yeah, Lana that. has her own theme. So we have a manager and a superstar that both have like their own themes. Yeah. Just when Lana comes out, she has a little fanfare thing, and then she does her uh, 
she introduces Rusev, and Rusev comes out. No more podium for Rusev. I also noticed that. I guess it's just like the Van Dangle. I guess we're, we're getting. I guess I'm, I'm gonna say we're gonna see it later, but it's like the Van Dangle light bright in the ring. Yeah, we see it some days, and some days we don't. Some days we see the little felt stuff at the beginning of the ramp. Some days it's just the Minitron that's like that. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, out of this match, Brandon, what did you get? Our uh, truth actually showed a little bit of a fight at the beginning. He, uh, he gave uh, Rusev a nice kick to the head. Um, Rusev then just took over, and it was basically another squash match. Um, he uh, did a few knees to the spine, Truth, and then uh, basically won via the accolade. The accolade. The good old Cobra Clutch. Oh, not Cobra Clutch. That's my bad. Camel Clutch. Camel, Camel Clutch. clutch. Yep. And then uh, after the match, uh, Xavier Woods tried to come in and <laughs> save our truth. Yeah, lost in the woods. Yep. He got lost in the woods there. Yep. <laughs> and he just got destroyed. After Lana told him to Rusev crush. Rusev crush. <laughs> yep, he's still looking to Lana for, for orders, I guess. No, I would. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I'd take any orders from Lana any day. <laughs> uh, after that, other than that, we had a... Match for the 850th time, people. Van Dangle versus Santino. How many people are excited for that? A big zero. fat zero. Same old shit. Okay, guys, same old shit happened in this match. WWE is missing out on, like, huge potential for Johnny Curtis right now, but they keep putting up against Santino Morella every goddamn week. My God, when is this thing going to ever end? This is probably the longest feud ever. Like, when, when did this feud start? Phil, do you remember when this feud started? This had to have started, like, what, back to the Rumble? Whenever uh, Emma debuted, I'd say, I think. Yeah, but Van Dango and that Santino were facing each other before that. Even before that? Even really? Before it goes that. That. Yes. It's the longest TV feud, that's for sure. I don't, these guys, they, they don't, can't even show up on pay-per-view. It's just, it's, it's the same old crap. Santino won via roll-up. Whatever. I'm, I'm done talking about this. All right, on to our main event, though. We have Sheamus against Booty Star. Uh, Brendan, what did you get out of this match? Uh, it was pretty slow to start. Uh, Sheamus went for the 10 beats of Bodrum or whatever he calls it. <laughs> um, and after two or three hits, Batista ran out of the ring and avoided the rest of it. Uh, they went to a quick commercial break. And apparently on the WWE app that we didn't get to see, uh, Sheamus uh, th uh, threw Batista over the announce table. And then uh, they came back from commercial, and Batista uh, turned the tables and kicked the, st uh, kicked the still steps into Sheamus' shin, and then threw him off the barricade. Uh, Batista then threw Sheamus shoulder first into the ring pole. Uh, just a lot of a lot of aggressiveness in this match from two guys that are that have that style. Yeah, I noticed that there was a lot more aggression in this match than there usually is in a Batista Sheamus match. Um, I guess just free too even the aggressive guys going at it. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's what I like to see, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sheamus uh, tried to come back with his, his five moves of doom that he tries to do. <laughs> um, he did an Irish curse backbreaker, and he finally got the ten beats of Vodrum on Batista. He sets up for the bro kick. Batista ducked out of the ring. They come back in. He attempts another bro kick, which he then Batista counters into a spear. Um... Sheamus uh, countered the Batista bomb once, but then he hit his uh, head off the turnbuckle, and uh, Batista then get, got the Batista bomb for the win. A clean heel a win here. Clean in this match. win. Wow. This was, uh, this was something I didn't expect to see while I was watching this match. I expected to see a uh, failed Batista bomb attempt into a bro kick for a Sheamus win, but Batista, a heel in this match, winning clean. This was uh, not expected on my part. Yeah, I mean, on the heels of, a, of an evolution reunion, I guess Batista's got that, that momentum going for him. Yeah, I, guess and, uh, I guess that's what they probably did, was give try to give Batista the momentum, and they're probably going to do the same with Orton, I'm going to guess, on Raw coming up. Maybe we're going to see uh, Orton against Sheamus, and Sheamus is going to go 0-2. Yeah, against the Evolution yeah. Boys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll even then see Triple H against Sheamus next week on SmackDown. You know what, that's my prediction. Sheamus is going to try to face each member of Evolution. Yeah, Sheamus and Triple uh, H again. We haven't seen that since their feud in 20, for WrestleMania 26. Yeah. I don't know, a decent match, actually, for yeah. this was like actually, Batista. Yeah. He, he, we've noticed that he's been get, getting tired out in the ring in his early matches, but, uh, I mean, Sheamus was the aggressor for most of the match, yeah. for this match, but, I mean, it was, it was still a decent match in, in this my was, books. This was actually a really good main event for SmackDown. I think Brandon can agree with me, too, here. Oh, yeah. Uh, SmackDown did a pretty good job in this main event. Uh, 
It's, for... it's nice to see a heel not use like weapons or like distracting the ref. It's just you never you don't see that too often. So mm -hmm. I just thought it was a, a nice touch mm -hmm. this time around. Well, for the the shit that SmackDown puts out there every week, um, this was actually a really good match. I like what they did. If they can continue to put good matches like that and stop putting like the 300th match between Van Dango and Santino every goddamn week <laughs> that people don't want to see, then you know what? SmackDown could become relevant once again. Like, it used to be back in the old days, like back in 2006 when we used to have Kurt Angle, uh, weekly title matches. We'd have, we'd have, we had a, they had a great roster back then. Eddie Guerrero. It, SmackDown back then was relevant to watch. I loved watching both Raw and SmackDown because it would always be different. Now SmackDown nowadays is always like... It's sometimes repeats of what we see on Raw yeah. or main event. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much story development on on SmackDown. I mean, I guess we did see we got to get, we got to see Triple H this week, but uh, like, how often you get to see him on yeah. SmackDown? I mean, I guess he did. The, he announced the match for Extreme Rules, so I mean, that that's an interesting reason to watch SmackDown this week, I guess. But uh, yeah, usually they just reference whatever happened on Raw. Yeah. So I guess to make SmackDown more relevant, yeah, just have some development some story development to happen on SmackDown. Yeah, or some more, like, top draws, bring some more top yeah. guys in SmackDown, have them make bring them some story matches. Yeah. Maybe even cut down a Raw from three hours. We don't need a three-hour Raw. To be and honest, I'd be happy with two hours. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, for this Raw and for half the roster being in Saudi Arabia, they did put up a good card, sort of, uh, maybe just for the main event in uh, the first match of the night. But uh, SmackDown, all right, another successful... Smackdown, I guess you can say this yeah, week. We an all, an all right show. Yeah. Nothing special. Yeah, I'll have to tune in for Raw. Other than that, I'm your host, Kyle. My co host, Phil. Match technician, Brandon. See ya. We're out. See ya.